Hey guys, it's Pokemonster TCG here, back with a brand new video. Today, I just wanted to share with you guys something that I got in recently. This is the biggest purchase that I've made this year, especially for a single card. So I'm very excited to share it with you guys. And at the same time, I'm also going to be talking about the potential for Blue Sky Stream, which is one of my favorite sets from the Sword and Shield era. So first, I want to show you guys the card that I received on Thursday. So are you ready? Three, two, one. There we have it. We have the Rayquaza VMAX HR Special Art from Blue Sky Stream. Basically the chase card from the set, bar none. This is my biggest purchase of the year and takes me one step closer to my goal of getting every single Sword and Shield Special Art in Japanese except for the evolution trio that you get from the summer campaign. But just looking at the texture and the art concept, this is an insane card, stunning card, and I don't know that many people that have it. Now, if you're just looking at the absolute pop number in a PSA 10, I believe it's close to 1,300, 1,400 now. So in absolute terms, it's quite high, but compared to other VMAX alts, I think the Moonbrion is like 3,000, 3,500 maybe. So comparatively speaking, from sets that were released a month apart, this is three times as rare. And next, we are just going to be discussing the set that this beautiful Rayquaza VMAX comes from, since I happen to be showing this to you guys. So the set in today's spotlight is Blue Sky Stream. As you can see, I have a box, but I only have three of these, and it's not a coincidence that I only have three of these. And I'll talk about why a little bit later, but beautiful box artwork featuring Rayquaza. Feels like every generation from XY, they've done a Rayquaza focused set. So in Sun and Moon, you had Sky Splitting Charisma, SM7, I believe. But in Sword and Shield, we have this, and in XY, we had emerald break so the first thing that i'm going to talk about this is not going to be a very long video this is just why this set is such a popular and insane set to collect in sealed or also just the set in general so the first thing we're going to do is going to break down the main pulls in the set and i happen to have them aside from this one to show you guys so we've got the alt art because this set was bang in the middle or at the start of the sword and shield alt art era where basically every alt art that came out was a banger so first we have this metacham which is really cool but probably the lowest tier one you can see the s cavalier there the minin there so it's a very nice one but it is saying something that this is actually the worst one from the set so just put that down to the side and then we have a very popular one which is the sleepy dragonite Again, it's a very beautiful concept art drawn by Atsushi Furusawa, who drew the Suicune SAR from V-Star Universe. So we get the Sleepy Dragonite, which is probably, I would say for most people, like an A tier or S tier alt art. And I would say, or most people would say that this is the second worst alt art from the set, because then we have this one, which is the Rayquaza V. Some people prefer it to the Ray V Max, actually. But again, Rayquaza sort of facing backwards with the sunlight coming down and Zinnia. It's a pretty iconic artwork, I would say. So in terms of the sort of pulls that you get from the set, this is doing very well. So in terms of the pulls that you can get from this set, it's extremely strong, right? You get these four banger alt arts this one maybe not so much a banger but still very nice so you get three banger alt arts and except for eevee heroes most alt art sets only had three or four so as a spread this is very very strong because these are all a or s tier in my opinion then you have to look at the waifu or supporter trainer cards of which there are two very strong ones in here they're not the best ones from the generation but you have the zinnia and you have the Shauna, which was crazy in price when it first came out. So when you add up the trainer supporters plus the alt arts, that makes the set strength incredibly high. 
The only thing that sort of detracts from the set, in my opinion, is when you look at the spread of the total pulls that you can get. And by that, I mean, you open any box, what are the chances that you're gonna get one of these? And for that, you have to look at the other pulls that you can get. And there are some pretty gnarly ones in there. Like there's a Trevenant, you know, there's a Gyarados, and you know, Gyarados is a popular Pokemon, but in terms of, you know, the value or artwork on the Gyarados full art, it's not that great. And then you've got obviously the rainbow versions of the trainers, which aren't worth much. Aside from what I've shown here, you obviously do have the Rayquaza full art and the Rayquaza VMAX rainbow. So overall, I would still say it's a very strong set. And then we just need to talk about the sealed aspect of this set. Why is it doing so well? If you look at recent sold prices, this is pretty much a competitor to EV Heroes, which is crazy when you think about the popularity of EV Heroes, right? But the one thing that sets this aside or sets this above EV Heroes, in my opinion, is just the pure rarity of this box. The release of this set to me was almost mythical. Like it just happened in a flash and then it was gone. And I just didn't see a major reprint where I was able to pick up more. And, you know, if you're watching in the comments and you did manage to pick some up on a reprint, please let me know. But I think what happened is there was so much fatigue or there was so much money that was put into EV Heroes at the time. Obviously, this set came right after it together with Skyscrape and Perfect that I think people probably overlooked it, including myself, because we were like, oh, you know, this set is never, never gonna compare to EV Heroes. You know, the Rayquaza is cool and stuff, but when you compare the EV Heroes and Blue Sky Stream side to side within a month or two of release, this was almost underwhelming to some degree. But I think what that means is that, you know, not many people actually pick this up, open it up, which is why it's so rare today. And Pokemon never reprinted this to my memory. You know, they've reprinted Lost Abyss. They've reprinted Paradigm Trigger a lot. They've reprinted Incandescent Arcana. But this box feels like a very rare box. And I only have three in my collection. And what I would say is making collecting this even harder nowadays is the risk of resealed boxes. The higher the value of the box, the more likely that it's going to be resealed. Because scammers can make more money out of using an empty box for this set than for a cheap set that no one wants right so i would be very careful buying these boxes on the market now unless you know exactly who you're buying it from or if it's like you know you're buying it from a friend and i might buy some from my friends who basically bought a batch of 10 when it first came out they opened some boxes themselves from that batch and they pulled the rayquaza v themselves so to me, that makes the risk of the box that I buy from them being resealed a lot lower. So when I'm buying, these are the kinds of things I'm thinking about. I'm not just gonna buy this from Mercari, but it is very, very cool to have this set when you consider the set strength together with the rarity of the box. So there we have it, guys. There's my set analysis on Blue Sky Stream. I think it's gonna continue to do very well. I think it's got the fundamentals to perform well. So let me know what you think of Blue Sky Stream and I'll see you guys next time.